Good day and welcome to everyone joining us for this pre-recorded preview. It is recorded on Monday morning early doors. This is for the Tuesday meeting, 17th of October, Fairview Turf Track at this point in time. But with the weather patterns in it around the country, keep a close eye. On the line is the resident expert. Firstly, Grant, how are you doing? And secondly, this weather's got us all boxed up. Morning, Sheldon. Morning, Panthers. Yeah, we're a big problem down here as well. No doubt this me meeting will be moved to the poly. We've had a lot of rain and it hasn't really stopped. So um, I think we'll be on the poly tomorrow just waiting for the, the guys to get to work this morning and maybe they can change it nice and early. Um, but definitely going to be going to the poly here, Sheldon. The bar pot starts in the very first race, and your suggested bet is a bar pot. Now, number one, Raptor Island, the son of Dynasty. Now, if you look at this individual, had the two runs there locally, went third on both occasions. And I remember this horse in KwaZulu Natal. He's run well on the poly, so if they do switch the surface, they thought a bit of this individual. Must be the horse to beat. Um, I do think so. Back to the five furlong, um, Sheldon, definitely the horse to beat. Shows an obscene amount of speed and then goes very one pace the last bit. So down to the minimum trip, decent draw. Yeni up, he knows how to get them out there. I think it'll be a hard nut to crack. Probably one horse to beat in Donny T, who showed a, a decent first run in Port Elizabeth here on the poly, but that was definitely over further. He's also back to a five furlong. Um, it's a boat race. I think this is the exactor for the day. So one from six for me, and you're going to play uh, Cortex and uh, uh, Sarfectors, the 12 and the 11 to fill up. There we go, Grand Paddock, Bankering number one, Raptor Island, over the 1,000 metre trip, has the need for speed, and certainly going to be the horse they have to beat. <laughs> Moving along swiftly to race number two, where another banker over 1,200 metres in the form of number one, Dawn of Gold. This is from the Gavin Smith stable. Five runs to date for a second and a third. Now, Grant, when you look at the CV of number one, Dawn of Gold, just seem to need a few runs just to find out what it's all about. And they put the cheek pieces on last time, career best? Yeah, 100%. Uh, she's a very, very nice run last time out and the previous run. She's having a third run since she's joined here, so she's going to be, be cherry up. Good draw, Kamalo up. Uh, obviously, the filly on form that looks like the right horse in the race was Faya Chaser, but she won't be taking her place if it moves over to Polly. She's off to Cape Town on the weekend. So it leaves the door open for the one dawn of gold. I think she'll take a power of beating. Definitely a banker in the bipod. And uh, bigger players, the place kind of horses will be uh, 8, 9 and 10, but I'm, I'm strongly once again on the one horse. Excellent. So there, number one, Dawn of Gold, and you heard keep a close eye on number seven, Fire Chaser, because if it does move over to the poly, won't be taking her paces. On to race number three. This is due off at 13.50. The distance is 1,600 metres. And looking at Grant Paddock selections, he's gone with three bankers in a row. So the first three legs, banker. And this horse number 11, Gideon's daughter. Let's just have a look here. Well drawn, the daughter of Skitzgizzle, second to Magenta, first time out. And then last time out from a deep draw, running on third to Impressive Nessie. Had excuses, also bumped on that occasion. I think it's more greenness than anything else, Sheldon. Um, she's cherry ripe. This is what she's been looking for. She's looking for the mile. Doesn't concern the surface. Doesn't concern me if it goes over to the poly. I think if it was a grass, it would be even be better. But very, very hard horse to beat. Definitely the best bet on the card. There's no doubt in my mind. I think she'll take a power of beating. The improver in the race is number three, Dumasani. I'm not 100% sure if she'll run if it goes to poly. But she's been running on nicely. That same cloud form line is not a bad form line at all here in Port Elizabeth. Ponderosa Pine has had a lot of chances, but she's holding form and sky velocity. But I'm um, very, very strong. Number 11, Gideon's Daughter. There we go. A few strong bets on the card. And Gideon's Daughter, one of those horses that Grand Paddock believes will be very, very difficult to beat. Let's step on the gas to race number four. This is over 1,900 metres. And Grant, when it comes to race number four, yeah, you've got to load up with soldiers. 100% Sheldon, tricky, very tricky.
Suzuki race. In fact, I, I have loaded up here. I've got a few horses. It's a very difficult race. These horses run against each other on uh, numerous occasions. I went for um, number 10 here to win it, which is um, Storm Commander. He ran a very good race last time out. I think he'll be happy being up in trip. He's been finishing his races off and just they're running out of space. So I'm going Storm Commander from the Zisman West Hazen horse, number two, Alado's Pride. The improver here is definitely going to be Ellis Island, um, new horse in the Mishmi from Lunga Gila. And um, I think the other horse, Bo Color, strong front runner, of course, will probably suit, but she'll probably be better in a Phillies race. So I'm definitely uh, in the camp of number 10, but you need to load up your uh, bypass 279011. And in my pick six, you have to add in the six, then in focus as well. There we go. Add in horse number six for the pick sixes and so on, the quartets. Move on to race number five, which is over a distance of 1,400 metres. And the starter should hit the go button at 1,500 hours. So 3 o'clock, 1,400 metres. Now Grant's gone with numbers three, five, and six. Let's kick off with number three, Phantom of the Forest, a five-year-old, give me the green light. Still a one-time winner after the 17 appearances. Could this be the opportunity to get that elusive second win? Um, so when he's had, a, he's had a short break after his last run, a very much improved run on the surface, going a touch further, good draw. He's going to be there and thereabouts, there's no doubt. Um, I think the, the horse to beat here, definitely the five-horse Timbervati River. Ran a very, very good race to that Cape Town horse last time out. I actually think he's worth a bet. I don't know what price is, there's no betting out, but from a decent draw, Chase knows him well. And the big factor is he's up that extra furlong. Timbervati, very, very hard to beat from Path of Choice and Phantom of the Forest. But um, I think Timbervati River is worth a bet. Now, number seven, Admiral's Ransom. A lot of the shrewdies went for this individual last time and came through with flying colours. How's number seven, Admiral's Ransom, doing? Uh, he's been off a while, eh? Uh, Sheldon, he's probably going to need this run, first run back. Uh, he has been off a while. Excellent. So number seven, Admiral Ransom, more than likely in need of the run after pulling off a bit of a move last time beating Mahandas. Let's go on to race number six, over 1,400 metres. And when you look at race number six, how are you playing race number six, Grant? Um, I like this Philly Remo. I think she's my, she's my value bet on the day. Back on the 1,400, back on the poly. A very good run to Rose of Bayou. Uh, two runs back, three runs back, sorry. And uh, on that form, she'll go very close. She won't miss the first three. There's no doubt. The horse to beat is probably Idita. Um, also, 80 days off, come back from a trip to to your side of the country. So, um, yeah, she's probably the Philly to beat. Remo won't miss the first three. There's no doubt. And then you probably have to back up with... Um, Something like Easy Living in Chronicles of Narnia. But I make it between Rima and the Philly Idita, and probably a slight preference to Idita, but there's not going to be much between them. Rima enjoys the fast track, enjoys going to the front, so uh, she's got to be a big runner. Now let's move on to race number seven, which looks an absolute cavalry charge. Like you mentioned, there's no betting out at this early stage of recording, so we're just going on what we see and the numbers that we like. Looking at this 1,200 meter contest, there's a few horses that have achieved in the 90s and a lot of them in the 80s. So in a merit-rated 78, I think the, the winner will justly be rewarded here because it's a very tricky contest. Yeah, Sheldon, really. This is this is a field kind of a race, there's no doubt, but unfortunately a large field. Putin's promise, you have Madam Vicky. Unfortunately, she's carrying 61 kilos against the boys. The horse like First Origin has done absolutely nothing wrong. I'm not sure if he's going to go on the poly surface, though. Queen's with is available. Globetronic is holding solid form, and he does go on the poly, but listen, it's an absolute nightmare. Go wide as possible. Um, I, I ended up tipping the six horse here. I thought maybe that could be the right horse. Uh, first origin. Cruisador's got a chance. Globetronic, but punters need to go as wide as possible and whatever their budget can afford. Excellent. What about this horse number seven, Paris Rex? Just having a look at this individual. Had the 32 runs for three wins and over 78 was once a 91, number seven, Paris Rex. Let's just have a look there. You're 91 off a 78 now. Is this a horse that could improve and run into the money? Um, Sheldon, all depends how he goes down. He has got 
issues in front, so um, you have to watch him go down. But he's got, the, he definitely has got the ability to beat a field like this. There's no doubt. In fact, there's quite a few horses again. Even a, even a, a low weight of um, Joyous Jubilee loves the surface. Got a half decent draw, so that's also in the money. It's it's, it's, it's very very difficult, Sheldon. But as I say, you did find one there. Uh, he has got a chance, but you have to watch him go down. Excellent stuff. So number seven, Paris Rex, obviously a horse is feeling good and moving good on the day. Throw him in. And number 12, Joyous Jubilee. That'll take us on to, as we call it, the lucky last race. Race number eight, over 1,000 metres. Dual fat 16.45. And just looking at the field for the 1,000 metre trip. Grant, now if we if we're in trouble, how do we get out in race number eight? And if we're playing with the their money and we're playing for free, what type of bet would you suggest in race number eight over the thousand meters? You know, Sheldon, uh, race eight at, uh, in Port Elizabeth is the old quartet race. There's no doubt it's an extremely difficult race once again. Um, a filly like your money Vague's back in trip, she could she could definitely pop up. Had a liter. You have the new horse, uh, Mia Regina. Mia Regina, um, you know, she just won a maiden. It's probably got a bit more to do down here. And this filly, Triumph, won a really, really good race last time out. Um, really good race first time out. I don't know if this one will run her from draw, draw 12 on the poly. That's another one that we have to wait and see. And Angel sees the horse that's holding a bit of form, but over slightly further. So this is really tricky. Two, two roving bankers in the quartet. I'm definitely going to be going Angel C and Triumph. And then you load up around it. But once again, it's a pick six race. If you, we've gone shallow early on and you can actually load up here once again. It's a terrible race. Super, that's the eight race program. Now, Grant, we're going to bring up your suggested bet, which is a bar pot for the players out there. And obviously, the early stage are recording. We're the, on the turf at this stage, but keep a close eye on the changes as it could certainly move over to the poly. So, Grant, if you want to take the viewers through your bar pot selections, please. I will do. First of all, we're going to do our bet, my best bet, race three, number 11, Gideon's Daughter. My value bet, race six, number three, Remar. And then my buy pop, we're going to go banker one by banker one by banker 11. Then it's two, seven, nine, ten, and 11 by three, five, and six by three and eight for 30 rand. Super. Thanks very much, Grant, for being on the line. And let's see what happens in the, the next couple of hours as we move forward. But as you mentioned, more than likely to move over onto the poly. And once again, thanks very much for all your input, Grant. Sheldon and good luck tomorrow Panthers. Bye bye. Thanks very much to Grand Paddock on the line. And as you heard, the weather is playing havoc around the country at this point in time. So keep a close eye, see if they do change it to the poly track. And then obviously you'll update all your changes and have to make some new selections.